Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Good evening, good evening, everybody who's joining us. We'll begin in about three minutes. Good evening, everyone. We'll be beginning in, beginning in about two minutes. Good evening, everyone. We'll be beginning in about one minute. All right, we're going to begin and I just want to welcome everyone who's here um, to our meeting. I hear a few people, uh, I've got the mute all on, but if you can just double check your microphones um, before we begin, that would be wonderful just to make sure that we keep the audio as clean as possible for this meeting. On behalf of the Wisconsin School Music Association, Wisconsin Music Educators Association, I wanna welcome you tonight to this music education meeting um, and before we begin with the purpose and the goals I just want to introduce the people who you'll be working with tonight um, during this music education in Wisconsin meeting. My name is Lori Fons. I'm the executive director of the Wisconsin School Music Association and uh, Wisconsin Music Educators Association and I'm so fortunate tonight to be joined by Paul Booty, WMEA president. And Paul if you just want to say hi. Hi everybody. Happy to be with you tonight and looking forward to our discussion. Thank you, Paul. Uh, Brad Schneider, WMEA president-elect. Good evening, everybody. Glad to be here. Katie Sider, WMEA immediate past president. Hi, everybody. Thanks for being here. We're also joined by Mark Kernke, who is a principal at Point at High School and a WSMA board member. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're also joined by um, John Gilliland, who is an adjunct faculty at UW-Milwaukee um, and is also our WSMA board member. And he is our, also our immediate press president. John, if you're able to unmute and say, hey, that's great. Otherwise, we'll just move on and come back later. 
Oh, sorry. I had too many buttons up. Hey, <laughs> you're talking to somebody who's t incredibly tech savvy this evening. Thanks. Glad you're all here. Thank you, Don. And we also are joined by Julie Palkowski, uh, who's the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, Arts and Creativity Education Consultant. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for being with us tonight. And then um, joining us a little bit later tonight um, are Mia Forslund and Ryan um, Hendricks from PBS Wisconsin, and I just want to give them a chance to say hello as well. Hi, everyone. We're so glad to be here with you this evening. Hello. Same. <laughs> Happy to be here. Fantastic. I just wanted to start with the purpose for this evening, just to make sure that um, we're clear on the why and, and why we're here tonight. We're here because we wanna provide Wisconsin music educators and school administrators access to tools, resources, and support for their use and creation of school schedules and plans that ensure access to a well-rounded education for all Wisconsin K-12 students. And our goals this evening are to share outreach and call to action information that led to this meeting, provide you, um, if you're a music educator or school administrator, an overview of all the tools and resources currently available and in development that may provide you and your team curricular and health safety guidance, create a space for you tonight to dialogue about what is working and already has proven to be useful with your fall 2020 planning and then finally, at the end, we, we will send you away requesting that all in attendance share this information with additional colleagues. Really, the hope is to make sure everyone knows what all is available as they make their most complex um, plans for fall of 2020. So this started with an outreach call to action. Um, and I just want to give you a, a little perspective on that before we go on to Mark Hern Hernke. Um, earlier this week, we received an urgent message from um, administrators. It actually came through administrators that some may not be receiving clear information and don't have time to read through and find the necessary information about music instruction. So actually the, um, the beginning and the genesis of this meeting was actually from administrators. But through those conversations, it was also very clear that a lot of music educators weren't maybe yet aware of, of many resources that are out there and in development. So, um, we are really pleased to have you here with us tonight, just so we can dialogue and discuss all of what is there for you. It's also in response to a recent report that we received that some of the county health departments may be stating that certain courses can't be offered rather than explaining the risk of, of in-person behaviors related to aerosols. So there was a, you know, the messaging about no music conflated with um, maybe um, refraining from singing or playing wind instruments. Your music associations have created resources for you and tools for your use to support school-based plans and can provide access to additional places we can give you specialized information. So we plan on providing you about a half hour to 40 minutes of just purely information about what is available. And then we'd like to move into discussion rooms for about 25 to 30 minutes to share your strategies and ideas with each other that are working in your school districts to date or ones that you're planning to explore based on the information you're learning about this um, evening. So it is now my pleasure to introduce you to two um, WSMA board members who you met in the introduction, Mark Kernke, Poynette High School Principal and WSMA South Central District Board Representative, and John Gilliland, who's adjunct faculty at UW-Milwaukee and the WSMA Media Past President. They will now be sharing with you some perspectives from the field and a message from our board. Hello, uh, thank you all for, for joining us tonight. Um, just thanks for, for taking time out of your evening and, and uh, to try to figure this stuff out. I think um, our perspective, I mean, this is a, this is a tough situation. Um, we all care about music. We all know what music can do um, for our kids. Um, we all want to have uh, music continued in the fall, um, and uh, we're here to to sort of brainstorm how to happen, how that, to, uh, how we can get that to happen here. Um, I know our admin team is thinking about things. We're reading. We're trying to to do the best we can to uh, 
to to give music in the in the uh, in the fall. Um, so we we uh, just appreciate. I know I know I'm going to look forward to uh, hearing a bunch of new ideas. I think a lot of us are planning for virtual, um, a mix, a hybrid of having students. But uh, I know just uh, getting ideas from different people and different admin will uh, really help our team. So thanks for joining us tonight. Thanks, Mark. Uh, I finally figured out how to operate this. I've, I've got a brand new mic uh, because my kids complained that they couldn't hear me. Of course, that's not a bad thing all the time, but I'm having a hard time trying to remember how, to, uh, how it operates. Um, as, as Laurie mentioned, I'm uh, on the board of directors of WSMA and uh, uh, adjunct faculty at UW-Milwaukee. Um, I also, uh, full disclosure, I need to tell you that I'm a recovering high school band and choir director, uh, retired school administrator, and I'm back working as an adjunct. Uh, and so you never get away from this stuff. It's a real pleasure to take part in these discussions as we begin to navigate through a, what can best be described perhaps as a challenging set of obstacles that none is a, of us have ever encountered. Um, I'm willing to bet that this is your first pandemic uh, as well. Um, obviously, we'll, we'll be addressing these solutions um, uh, to our current dilemma will require completely new ways of thinking about music education, not merely out of the box. Um, I've said on a number of occasions, our thinking must be nowhere near the box near any box. And to start, we have to be at least six feet away from that box. Um, individual schools and school districts will elect different kinds of plans to address scheduling, curriculum, programming, and so on, with the overarching goal to engage Wisconsin students, student musicians in making music in the safest ways possible. WSMA recognizes that for many students, the very reason they come to school is to participate in their school's band, choir, orchestras, and to take advantage of all the other musical experiences provided to them. To that end, the Wisconsin School Music Association Board, our Executive Director Lori Fellens, and the WSMA staff are focused on developing new plans and updated programming to provide significant music learning experiences to meet the needs of Wisconsin students in these daunting times. Uh, again, thanks for, every, for, for participating in this vitally important discussion. And uh, especially when you could have elected to uh, uh, view a reboot of the NBA basketball season or the debut of Beyonce's new album. I'm just, I'm just tossing that out there. Even in these challenging times, seeing all of you who are the very people who do the actual work, the future of music education in Wisconsin is bright and WSMA is here to help. So thank you. Thank you again to Mark and to John uh, for being here this evening. And next I would like to introduce Julie Pawkowski, who is the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction, Arts and Creativity, Creativity Consultant. Um, we're really appreciative uh, that Julie could be here this evening and join us um, and share what additional supports you might expect from Wisconsin Department of Public Ex Instruction at this time and in the future. Thanks again, Julie. Great, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the opportunity to share some of the information that has already come out for the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. We understand that it's imperative that the schools provide access to all of the arts, music, art, theater, dance, specifically within the Wisconsin Administrative Code. We have art and music specifically identified within those codes as well as all of the arts areas are identified within every student succeeds act if you look on page 807 i found that page for you um, out of a thousand plus pages that's the page that you really need to take note of it it'll identify those arts areas for you some important guidance to remember is that what the what of our teaching has not changed uh, the requirement of districts to identify those standards that's still in place along with administrative code that requires art and music to be a part of those comprehensive educational um, programming pieces within our public schools. So I highlighted this within the July 2020 newsletter that I put out and I continue to be vigilant in sharing this with school communities. communities. So I'm really thankful to have this opportunity tonight. 
Um, in addition, the arts continue to play a pivotal role during these challenging times and will continue to do so for all students. So three principles that are spelled out of that type of role is in a really amazing arts document, a statement from a consortium of over 50 plus organizations from across the nation. Uh, the unified statement is called arts education is essential. Uh, that particular uh, piece uh, basically points to the SLA, which I just mentioned. It points to the intersections of social emotional learning in the arts, as well as the nature of the arts to nurture a welcoming school environment that really allows students to express in a safe and positive way. And then I've been in scouring the resources uh, to, and have highlighted many of those links within that newsletter. So check that out. Um, we also have some access to a folder that provides you with other states resources where they've been able to identify more content specific information. Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction a couple of weeks ago launched uh, the Education Forward document. And although it doesn't right at this moment in time have specific contact, uh, specific information, we are planning to update it with more specific content to information, which would include the arts. So I just submitted some points uh, for consideration for that document. And it's currently being reviewed by our health consultant as well as our DPI council for possible inclusion. So look for that and I'll have some announcements. Um, and of course, also just uh, we're just reminding people, please check with CDC uh, requirements as well as the Department of Health Services, your local school district and your local health order since it appears that the pandemic um, really is very spotty in, in where it's uh, doing its work. Um, but anyway, thank you again. Research from the field continues to bubble up. Uh, one stu study of note that I really am excited about is the preliminary results of the Performing Arts Aerosol Study, which uh, shows some very interesting uh, data. Uh, I know we're looking for the final conclusion of that report to come out soon, and I'm hoping that will provide us with a little more specific guidance as to what music education is specifically ensemble work might look like. So anyway, thank you all for your efforts to keep the arts in front and then please contact me with additional ideas. I appreciate all of your efforts and patience as we work together through these challenging times. So thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Julie. We really appreciate you being here with us this evening and all of the work that um, DPI is doing now and in the future to assist so next, I'd like to move into an announcement from WSMA about what you might expect from us this year and share a few things that are in development. So like all of you, I think that in development word is we're all developing what this will look like. But um, we've got some really good promise on five uh, projects. And one of them um, is PBS's project that we'll share with you as the fifth component. So the first is, our solo ensemble festivals. If you were able to uh, participate this year with students, if that's a role you play, we did have a virtual solo festival this year. We were able to make a pivot at the end of March for district festivals that had not occurred and for our state festivals and offer the WSMA virtual solo festival. And we did have over 5,000 kids participate in our virtual solo event. So that uh, let us know that that may be a value is the ability to still participate and receive feedback. Um, we're considering having potentially two tracks, a comment only or just an adjudicated only track and then the more uh, traditional rated uh, festival event. And we are working hard to make that available by October so that the vision right now is that we would actually run two semesters of solo ensemble an October through December first semester opportunity with the January state festival opportunity. And then we would turn around and do it again with the same cadence of uh, February through April 2021 and then run a May state. So that's the what goal we're working toward. We still have to secure the correct permissions from publishers and make sure we've got a system that can handle that. But we're working hard to see if we can't bring that to light 
and it will also maybe provide us an opportunity to waive some of the normal requirements and actually allow students to participate both semesters. It's another thing that we're looking at is that a student could actually participate both in semester one and semester two if they were interested. So we'll keep you posted on that if you are a WSMA member school educator or principal. The second is state honors project. Uh, so just like all the other things that we've done since March, we had to stop and pause and anything in person wasn't possible, but we did run the state high school honors camp virtually for eight days this summer. And we were able to still hold a really valuable, I think, honors camp that provided wonderful opportunity for our kids to make deep relationships and connections both to music and to others. And we've gotten wonderful feedback about what we were able to do there for students who had already been accepted into the high school honors project. Middle level is about a week from announcing their plans and the students who've been selected to the 2020 middle level honors and that will continue on and they will have um, an opportunity in October to come together virtually. One thing I wanna point out about those first two stars um, and we just say this confidently, we were the only state in the United States that was able to do one or both of those and so we are working hard also to support all of our state colleagues across the United States about sort of what were our lessons learned, what worked, what didn't work. Um, and so we're really proud to say that we at least made an effort and an attempt for our kids. And it always really was about making sure that those kids still were served. Looking at our other programming then, you know, just like all of you, it's what can we do? We've decided to take our student composition project and ramp that up. So we're gonna be adding components to the student composition project this year that will include things such as workshop for, workshops for educators and the hope is opportunities for composers and um, musicians to connect through that project with teachers who may wanna bring them in virtually through their classroom. And when you hear a little bit about the PBS project, just this uh, idea and uh, concept of Wisconsin or Midwest musicians, as well as world musicians, what is close to home and, and then what is um, you know, the worldview, the internet provides us that opportunity to dream a li little bit bigger about what might be possible. So uh, those plans are in the works. Um, and we have a teacher focus group meeting, just so you know, to decide, we're thinking about expanding it to include third through fifth grade, if we can figure that out. So. Again, these are conversations and in development, but we hope by the end of August, we can announce all of what we'll be able to do there for you. So then we'll continue to offer online workshops in collaboration um, and with WMEA, and they'll talk more about their workshops as well. But we look at online workshops running across all of our programming, as well as topics you might be interested in. So just know we're really committed to making sure that those supports are still available, both to educators and to kids. And then finally, um, the pre-pandemic work that was gonna look a little bit different when it rolled out, but it, um, we are really thrilled that tonight, you all are going to learn for the first time about the work that WSMA and PBS Wisconsin have been doing for a year. Some of you may have taken the survey back in August, which to me, I'm sorry, it feels like it was about four years ago, but back in August, we put out a survey and asked what you might need and want for resources as general music teachers. And we did a statewide tour um, and me and Ryan may share a little bit about that, but we learned a lot from you. And I'm gonna turn it over now to them about the survey data, 380 strong uh, general music teachers took the listening project and what it is turned into. So Mia and Ryan, um, it's all yours. All right, uh, thanks Lori. Uh, so I'm Ryan Hendricks. I'm a producer with PBS Wisconsin Education, and I'm here with my fellow producer on the project, Mia Forsland. Uh, so we have been collaborating with WSMA and musicians and music educators in Wisconsin for a really exciting new resource. And before I say anything else, I'm going to share my screen and give you all a little preview. Music is another language. I'm speaking right now. Not everyone can speak 
the language they were speaking. But music actually is a global language that everyone could communicate and express your feelings and your thoughts and, and your energy and your love. You can connect and communicate with the rest of the world without limits or frontiers. Okay, so um, what you just saw as the project is called uh, Resound Songs of Wisconsin. Um, so now this, uh, the project itself is geared toward uh, general music educators and learners in grades four through eight. Uh, we're really excited to be launching a project website with the resources in just a few weeks. Um, now, as part of the project, we've created a series of videos featuring four musicians and or duos who hold uh, different cultural identities and are making their music in different communities throughout the state. Um, those musicians are Wade Fernandez, Ma Vu, uh, Richard Hildner Amakanki, and Juan Tomas Martinez, and Monique and Shanti Ross of Sister Strings. Now, for each musician, there will be a story video where you get to know the musician, and their experiences with music, uh, as well as a performance video where they perform a song they've selected specifically for this project. And Mia will tell you a little bit more. Yeah, in addition to the videos, other resources that will be available include audio recordings of the featured songs, as well as educator engagement guides created by music educators for music educators to activate the media with learners. And these guides provide information about the musician, as well as knowledge, skill, and effective outcomes and strategies for meeting those outcomes, um, and uh, alignment with WMEA and DPI standards. And along with these guides, there will be a page hosted and curated by WSMA that will offer even more resources um, that can support extended learning opportunities. And we are so appreciative of the opportunity to collaborate with WSMA and incredible musicians and music educators throughout the state and we hope that you will explore and share these resources when they are available online later in August. So Lori, I think we can uh, pass Wait, it back I'm, to you. I'm returning it back to, hopefully it's gonna go back right to where we started from, here we go. Fantastic. Um, I just really wanna give um, a big thanks to Kathy Bartling and Darren Mank, who've been the lead uh, lead people on the project and there's a whole host of other teachers who've been involved who gave feedback and created those curriculum guides we're really excited for you to see the amazing work um, that's coming out of this project which will be coming up too shortly one thing before i move on from here we've got a couple questions in the chat about the virtual solo festival i just want to address it this year we are looking at it also including ensembles so when we made that pivot in March, it really was focused on solos, but we're still hopeful that we can also accommodate um, ensembles as part of the virtual festival as well. That's the goal anyway. The last thing I'd like to go through um, before I turn it over to um, the WMEA team who has some fantastic state resources to share is just our thoughts on some of the current resources that are out there that really are valuable um, and that we think you can, for curricular um, information anyway, really lean in and rely on to get some good ideas from. And all of the materials being shared tonight, the first 45 minutes of this is being recorded tonight. You'll have that. We will send out um, the slide deck from tonight and the resources I'm about to show you are all live on the internet. So we'll send you out links to make sure you know how to get to everything that I'm showing you. So no worries about that. The first is the Fall 2020 Guidance for Music Education that came out of um, the National Federation for State High School Programs and National Association for Music Education. Um, that guidance has a lot of the real nuts and bolts of what we just need to be considering. Julie Palkowski already mentioned the International Performing Arts Aerosol Study, which the National Federation of High Schools, the NFHS is their acronym, um, and we continue to wait for that second part of the study to come out, but that's a great resource there. And then both those organizations have actually built COVID-19 resource pages where they link to other um, resources that they feel really um, 
support things that have research base. And I think that's the critical part as we talk tonight about the health and safety pieces, we have to make sure that that's based in research because the health and safety of our kids and our educators has to be at the front of these conversations right now. And then there are several organizations. Um, some are listed here, the Percussive Arts Society, American Choral Directors Association, ASTA, the American String Teachers Association, and College Band Directors National Association have all been putting out some really great resources. So Julie mentioned they've got links and, and so do we. So I think these are some that you can really count on. The next thing I wanted to tell you about, and we actually met today. It was our, our normal meeting day. It was phenomenal. Um, we've formed a coalition. We're now up to almost 20 state organizations and businesses in Wisconsin. And if you check out this website, it's a blog style uh, website. And the businesses are uh, community arts organizations that have music as their mission, like Wisconsin New Symphony Orchestras, um, Madison Symphony Orchestra, uh, Milwaukee Children's Choir, as well as retail businesses that are really supporting us all. Hal Leonard is part of our coalition and was in the meeting today. Uh, music stores such as Hyde Music, Brass Bell Music. It's always bad when you don't have the list in front of you because you're going to miss somebody, but White House and Music, uh, Schmidt Music, um, Interstate Music, um, and I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody, but go to the website and you will see their logo. And then finally, uh, we also have some organizations on there that are other nonprofits like us that we work with, like Wisconsin Choral Directors Association, our organizations, and then DPI, um, you'll see their information across the top. We are all working together to make sure you all are getting the best resources out there. And some of our retailers, we can't promote their products as associations, but we can do is show you what really great things are being developed for schools so that you can make your own decisions about some of the things you may um, want to make available for your kids. So we really suggest you check that out. Oh, I hit the page. So I guess I'm gonna show this to you real quick. So this is the page here. And I did that because I really don't wanna miss any of these wonderful uh, music stores. So I think Cop Most. Beyond the Notes Festival, the work Chris Gleason's been doing all summer, fabulous work. Um, we have Madison Symphony, and then you can see the rest here. So check this out and we get new um, coalition members every day. Their goal is to just really make sure you're getting great information in a timely way. The other consortium I wanna tell you about um, actually stems from a conversation we had with the Wisconsin High School Forensics Association and um, the Theater Association about the need to put out some health and safety guidance. At the time we did it, we didn't realize how complex this would be. And so we've got a guidance document that's uh, been reviewed by Wisconsin Health, uh, Department of Health Services, but we really are waiting for that study. So this website is available um, and out there, the Wisconsin Performing Arts Education Consortium website. As soon as we have that guidance ready to release, it will go up on that site. The other thing that's there on this site, and I'm going to click in just to show you real quick, is another place where if you're looking for uh, different areas of performing arts, because we realize music educators sometimes cross over in the roles they play in their building. For example, you may do school musicals or marching band, or you may be involved with some of these other ones. We've organized performing arts specific uh, documents around safety that might also you know, be of interest to you if you play other roles in your building. So these are all hosted on this WPAEC.org website right now. And then as soon as our guidance document is ready to go, we'll, we'll get it up there for you. So I am, I really appreciated having an opportunity to talk with you. And now I'm happily going to turn this over to our wonderful team from WMEA who's going to share the richness of resources that are right here in the state for music educators. So Brad, turning it over to you. Lori, can you uh, call up the uh, advocacy resources page from the WMEA site? WMEA is our professional organization. Uh, it's one that teachers belong to as opposed to WSMA, which the schools belong to. Um, Paul Booty led us in a, a group of us this summer in a complete rewrite of the advocacy resources that are listed on this page. And I just want to give you a quick walkthrough and we'll, 
uh, dive into one of them a little more in depth. But you can see uh, advocacy documents. There are four of them there specific to COVID-19. Um, and each of them has merit and are worth pursuing. And then you'll see the next paragraph or block shows advocacy guidelines for music educators. Uh, and these include basic advocacy guide for teachers, how to present yourself, uh, practical guidelines in the event of emergencies or proposed reductions. This is pretty nuts and bolts, how to uh, advocate for your students learning. Uh, advocacy with families and community members, how to spend, you know, spread your network, speaking with legislators and school board members, connecting with those decision makers, and advocacy through language and educational philosophy. Um, there are some links down there. Oh, there's one more for parents that is written from the perspective of parents, how parents can get involved. Basic advocacy guidelines for family and community members. Um, I am the new advocacy committee chair, but I've been on the committee for five years as government relations uh, uh, chair before that. And during that time, it, the thing that's clearest to me is that advocacy is all about relationships and developing and maintaining and having good communication within those relationships. So uh, with that little introduction, Lori, if you could go back up to the top block and go into the talking points for speaking with administrators. I'm not gonna um, go in, in, into, I'm not gonna read this to you, but I do wanna hit some, some high points for you. And Lori, if you could just scroll along with me, that would be great. Um, the, um, the talking points to consider um, are very uh, important. You know, the number one uh, that we meet with our administrators and understand first and foremost that the administrators are just as stressed and just as nervous as, as we are. And I imagine there are administrators on this call and we as teachers in your buildings recognize that. And we're, we're all in this together and uh, we'll, we'll get through it. Um, the first talking point is music education is possible. Okay, discuss with your administrator how high quality music education remains possible. Remind them that music education may look different in terms of how the teaching is occurring, but the what of music education is still vital. The second talking point, opportunities to plan. Last spring, we were asked to explore new ways of carrying out teaching and learning during the shutdown. And all of this happened very quickly. Uh, some approaches were more effective than others, yet we learned a lot in the process. We now have time to plan and use our experiences to guide us in developing strategies that will provide rich and meaningful ways. These are things that you want to discuss with your administrator. Um, holistic approaches, as spelled out in the WMEA music standards, music education encompasses four artistic processes, creating, performing, responding, and connecting. Many of us have historically focused on performing. That's been our big thing. We now have an opportunity though to spend more time on the other artistic processes. Paul Booty is gonna talk a whole lot more about that when he talks about the standards. Julie Palkowski already mentioned social emotional learning. Given the upheaval caused by COVID-19, it's more important than ever that we support the social emotional well-being of our students. Community building is another talking point. Music brings people together. Given the prospect of distance learning this fall, we must find healthy and safe ways to maintain a sense of community. Importance of music education, the last talking point. As expressed in the WMA position statement you're going to see shortly, intentional engagement with music leads to a richer and more meaningful life. It helps students appreciate beauty, express emotion, develop creativity, value themselves and those around them. And now the position statements stand for themselves, but I really urge you to take a look at these. Your leadership uh, in WMEA has spent a long time um, and effort 
rethinking these and all this material I've covered is relatively new in the last two to three weeks. Um, the WMEA COVID-19 position statement. You know, despite the COVID pandemic, all children deserve equal access to a credible and well-rounded education. And then on down to the WMEA position statement, music education for all. Music and arts are essential components of well-rounded education for all children. You can look through these on your own and develop some great talking points and, and develop some dialogue with your own administrator. Then if you go down to the existing legislation, scroll down, there are three main points. Julie uh, Palkowski touched on two of them. Um, these are the legislative things that ask that music as part of the law is included in education for every student. The Ever Student Succeeds Act says music must be taught as part of a well-rounded education. That was a federal law in 2015. Julie mentioned the state statutes. Uh, the rule number is PI 8.01. And this is the one that talks about um, music is required K through six and grades seven through 12 uh, instrumental, vocal, and general music must be offered. And then the new one on the block, Wisconsin Act 85, um, and you may know about this, I hope you do. Um, the WMEA was the one that uh, had large measure in the origination of this ask, and it took two years to see it through, but there will now be a fine arts uh, data point on the annual school district report cards so that the enrollment percentage uh, in music, dance, theater, and, um, oh shoot, I'm forgetting the fourth one. Yeah, um, dance, drama, and visual arts. I forgot the visual arts. Um, are all going to be uh, shown on the district report cards. So in conclusion, uh, the WMEA has been working hard on this resources page. It's got a ton of information. I invite you to check it out at wmeamusic.org and navigate to the um, advocacy resources page. Thank you. Thank you very much, Brad. We really um, appreciate everything that you shared with us this evening great resources and so much work and time has gone into that. Next, um, I'd like to invite Katie Sider to share with you some information about the Music Education in Wisconsin document that came out the other day with the call to action video. Thanks, Lori. Um, some people I heard missed this document. It was at the top of the email along with the video that Lori had made. Um, I'm only gonna touch on a few pieces of it today because I know you can all read through it and um, go through it on your own sometime. But the one thing I do wanna say, and I'll probably say this over and over again, is that um, this, these are merely just suggestions. This is nothing that we are endorsing, just suggestions, because so much um, depends on where you live, what district you're in, the county you're in. Um, the um, Colorado studies were just preliminary. We don't have the recommendations yet. So just keep that in mind that these are all just recommendations. So Lori, if you want to go to the next slide, please. All right. So the first part I want to talk about is um, the health and safety considerations for our classrooms. So um, a lot of them I think we already kind of know about. And the purpose of this document is to kind of help you um, maybe create your own for uh, the school district that you teach in with the rest of your music colleagues um, and to create a dialogue with each other and with administration on this. So feel free to take bits and pieces from this document and all the other resources that we have and to create your own. So first is about masks and gloves. Um, some the, the, this form is already changing, like it already changed today. So this document, please check back to it because after the mask mandate today, the document already had to change again. So it's an ever evolving document. Um, 
but one of the recommendations has been uh, that if you, their masks are being worn at all times and for band, that, might, that means that there's a slit in there. That's one of the suggestions. Um, gloves are pertained a lot to percussionists or string players. Um, and uh, yeah, not as much for band because they gotta, you know, clarinet players gotta use their, their fingers. Um, then of course, hand sanitizers, wipes and hand washing. Social distancing is kind of changing as well. That keeps uh, being updated as well. The last I had heard, it was uh, recommended or suggested to be six by six with a student in the middle and nine by six for trombones. Um, but again, that is ever evolving. Um, and then one thing that some people don't always think about is to give time for the students to come in the room, give time to clean at the end, and give time to exit safely. Um, right now, there's suggestions of meeting for 30 minutes so that you have time to do those things at the beginning and the end of class period if you're in person. Uh, there's suggestion to do small group ensembles versus large group ensembles. I think we're all kind of aware of that if we're indoors, that we can't fit everything, everybody indoors like we used to. Um, in terms of performances, if you are gonna focus on some performance aspect, it, you might wanna consider performances outside. Um, you could per, do virtual performances, all of that kind of thing. Instrument sharing is kind of a hot topic. As Lori mentioned, the Wisconsin Music Strong Coalition met today and we talked about this a little bit. Um, in terms of uh, first for strings, perhaps sharing cellos and basses, I asked the question about what is a safe way to sanitize those instruments that doesn't damage the instrument. And was, I was told that there's information on that through ASTA. So if you're a string teacher, check that out. Um, in terms of band, tubas is the biggest thing I think that we deal with. And they're still working on that for us. Um, students aren't gonna be able to share the instruments without proper cleaning and sanitizing in between. So that's still, we're still waiting on that information. And then um, in rehearsals, it's um, just times to be kind of creative and give yourself nice space, whether you're outdoors or indoors and stuff like that to consider. Next slide, please. All right, so this one I think is probably the biggest one that is the most important when talking um, when music educators and administrators speak with each other because the curriculum is what is so vitally important. And many people just see the performance aspect of it and don't realize that there are other pieces to what music educators actually teach. So um, things to consider are individual or small group uh, rehearsals or, or instruction learning um, social emotional learning, as that's been mentioned a couple of times today, is super important with what we do. I mean, that's like everything that we do already, and that's the biggest piece that we're losing right now. And kids are just needing it, and teachers too, need it a lot. So that's definitely an area to really think about um, in how you might use that with part of your curriculum, whether you're virtual or in person or both. Um, you could record singing and playing and provide feedback. Feedback is so important. Um, one of the things that I thought was really neat, and I don't know, Lori, if at some point you wanna jump in and talk about this, but um, for one of honors, uh, you can talk to, one of the honors groups talk to a composer, I, I believe. And like, that's a huge advantage to be able to talk to a composer and you can do that within, um, virtually within your ensemble whether you're online or in person, um, which is really neat because sometimes we get so caught up and busy that you miss that part. Um, obviously, there's still music theory and history, composition and improvisation. We can do a lot of that. Uh, music technology, there's a lot of technology out there that I don't think we've even begun to learn about yet that we're really learning about now. And then oh, giving students voice and choice as well um, of what they want to do and what they want to learn and what is important to them that you can work to develop your curriculum. As Brad mentioned, um, the standards creating, uh, performing, responding, and connecting are 
very important to a well-rounded music education. And right now we might be focusing more on the creating, responding and connecting aspect. And I think that's what Paul is gonna talk about a little bit more today. And I did see in the chat, I don't know if it was answered, where is this document? This whole slide deck was gonna be shared with you all um, at a later time. And that this document is linked in it. So you can find it that way. All right, Paul. Thanks, Katie. So I'm going to be talking to you um, about the, the standards. And I want to just begin by saying that, um, you know, when we think about what we're, what we're doing in music classrooms across the state, I think the, the most natural response for people to think about is that performing standard. And you, you've heard um, some comments about that from, from various people tonight. I think, that, um, I think that's true for us as music educators, but I think maybe more often it's true for people who don't have the same music background as us. When they think about music, they think about our performing ensembles. And I think that the standards are, are such a great reminder of what's possible um, to do in, in our music classrooms. And, and again, centering around the artistic processes of creating, performing, responding and connecting. And the connecting piece I'm gonna, I'm gonna dig into a little bit um, in, uh, in one of the future slides. But I'd like to just mention um, up front here, that I, I would love to take just a quick peek at our WMEA standards webpage. On the, um, on the WMEA page, um, depending on the layout of your screen, it will be the rightmost tab, resources and learning, although you can see it's um, kind of folded over to the left side on this screen just because of the, the width of the page. But um, under resources and learning is where you're gonna find our tab for the, the um, WMEA music standards. Um, when you come to this page, you're going to see uh, an introduction on, on the first page of the, the home screen. You'll notice that um, there's some sample materials here. There's a, a featured project here, and I'm going to show you some more ideas as well. I know that one of the things that, that all of us are looking for is what do we do? Like, how do we make this really meaningful in our classrooms coming up in the fall. And, um, you know, some of these, these resources may be a great opportunity for you to start uh, those ideas flowing. Some of them will be made, designed pre-COVID, so um, they're not always going to be uh, appropriate for online or hybrid learning, but it might give you some ideas along the way as well. On the left-hand side of this document, um, we don't need to go to it, but the Getting Started tab, if you haven't, um, if you haven't spent a lot of time on the WMEA standards yet, um, I would encourage you to go to this page. There's actually two overview videos that, that really dig into what the standards are, how they're organized, how to read the maps, all of that. Standards maps tend to have a lot of language on them. There are many words, um, and so it's, it's easy to feel overwhelmed when you look at a standards map, but these, this, um, this page and these videos help to um, sort of decompress that and, and take you through what that actually looks like, unpack what, what the, the uh, standards documents are like themselves. Underneath where the cursor is right now, you'll see a section of standards maps, and you'll notice that there's a PK through 8 general music, there's secondary general music, ensemble, which is sort of your large group, typical ensemble um, sort of setting, a technology set of standards, composition and theory, and then um, sort of non-traditional, maybe more chamber sort of um, uh, performing groups as well with keyboard, guitar, keyboard, and harmonizing instruments. Um, within these, um, these these links on the left hand side, if you click on them, you will find that there are two different versions of these standards maps. One of them is organized by artistic processes. So you'll see a page that has all of the creating um, standards included on one page. There's another set that has um, the same exact information, but it's broken up by grade level for the elementary grades or levels of proficiency. So advanced or, um, you know, whatever, whatever that, that category is on the secondary level. So um, when you look at these documents, just realize that they're exactly the same information. They're just presented in different ways. And I think sometimes depending on how our classrooms are set up, one might be more valuable than the other, or depending on what what you're doing as you're actually planning. 
Um, the other thing that I want to point out is um, down at the bottom of the left hand side menu, there's a resources and teaching materials section. If you could click on that, please. This section has um, a poster, um, an overview poster right at the top of the page. I'm going to show you that on a slide coming up. There's also a wall display that that's a really nice resource for you. And then at the bottom of this page, you'll see an, um, another larger collection of teaching plans and curriculum samples. These are ideas that um, some of them are, are put together by our committee members on the standards committee. And some of them are put together by teachers in the field, many of who many of whom have actually come to our standards workshops in the past. So so there's some really um, nice holistic uh, kind of ideas uh, that are included on here. So we can go back to the slide and, and move on to the next slide, but I, I want to reinforce for all of us that the music standards are really a way to ground us and get us to think holistically about what music education can entail and maybe even challenge us as music teachers to go beyond our normal comfort zone or step outside of our own box. So the, what you're looking at right now this is the poster that I mentioned before that's available for download. And you can see that um, each of the artistic processes are listed across the top, creating, performing, responding, and connecting. And then underneath each of those headers, you'll see those process components that are listed there. So under creating, um, we first have to imagine what, what it is that we're going to be creating together and then start to plan and make, evaluate and refine, and finally, present. And you, you might notice that it's not perform. Presentations can come in many different ways, and, and that might be in an auditorium or wherever your performing space is. And it might simply be in front of your, your peers, or um, it might be done through technology in a virtual world. So um, as, you look at the, uh, as you look at this standards map, one of the things that I, um, I would recommend for you, and I'd challenge you to think about as you start to envision what your fall semester is going to look like, I'm going to give you an example. Um, in our performing set of standards, the very first step in that process is select, as in select the music that you're going to be engaging in, right? For many of us, when these standards came out, our standards committee heard lots of questions about like, what? We're, the students are going to select the music? Yeah, absolutely. Our students can select the music. And, and if you think about lifelong learners, we want our students to be educated enough to be able to choose good music, right? We want them to have that sort of a skill set. So for any one of these boxes that are listed under performing or any of the others for that matter, you can actually develop specific activities that um, are going to really engage your, your students in meaningful ways. We often, as we think about performing, um, we often think about that rehearsing piece and then presenting. We're moving towards that concert all the time, but there's much more involved in that. We can get our students analyzing, we can have them interpreting, we can um, get them adding their own ideas to the mix. There's just so many things that we can do and that's just in performing. I think in, and as Katie mentioned just a bit ago, the, the situation that we find ourselves in right now it's, it's an opportunity in many ways for us to really explore some of the things that maybe we haven't had time for in our, in our um, classrooms because we're worried about getting ready for a concert. So in our presentation, our standards workshop yesterday, one of our presenters and one of my colleagues in our, in our standards committee said, what sort of opportunities might you take advantage of if you didn't have to prepare for a concert? And it's a great, it's a very positive framework of what we could do. And that's not to say we can't have some sort of um, presentation or performance of some kind, even in our virtual worlds that we live in. But it's a nice shifting um, of mindset in terms of what this could actually look like. So I would challenge you to be thinking about um, each of these different areas. In our, in our standards workshop that we just had, um, we had people actually brainstorming about uh, what sort of activities they could do that would, that would um, align with creating or performing or responding or connecting, regardless of where we are actually teaching, that format of teaching, right? So how we teach might look different and we don't exactly know um, what that's going to look like. Um, but what we want to teach, that's our foundation, that's our pillar, right? And as we can use those standards as a way for that to, to um, really ground us in terms of what's important and how to achieve a holistic um, process in our education. So we had some awesome ideas that were shared. Um, 
in our workshop yesterday and, and different uh, presentations that we've had in the past, um, we had ideas about um, creating sort of a, um, a, a unique sort of an opportunity that would be done as um, uh, an opportunity to perform, but to perform actually in a backyard. Um, and have it, it, the person who presented this yesterday called this a farm table approach. And, and it was really fun talking about how um, we could take music and start to prepare it, maybe individually, maybe um, on one's, uh, by oneself in their own setting, but then to actually dig into a more holistic approach to what music education is like. So maybe exploring some of the community um, aspects, um, some historical things from the area that people have grown up, um, exploring the food and the culture, maybe some of the folk music that was connected to the area or the dance traditions or whatever it is, with the mindset that we could have this really holistic um, experience that kids could get involved in. One that becomes really interdisciplinary as well and um, gives us a chance to model what a connected um, uh, scenario teaching can be and, and how we can thrive if we choose to do it like that. You think about performing options. Um, I'm, I'm going to present an option to you that um, what if we actually had opportunities for our students to perform duets um, that they actually didn't do the music making next to each other, but instead they recorded there's so much technology as um, somebody mentioned before there's so much technology available. What if our students were actually creating these tracks of performance and the collaborative piece and that piece that kids are are so yearning for when we're on our online virtual teaching platforms. What if instead of making music together, they actually took the time to explore the music together and talk about what they liked or didn't like about how their, their duet piece fit together or how they might shape it differently or whatever it is. So the actual music making wasn't in the same room together, but the collaboration still could be. I think there's just great opportunities for us to think outside of our own box about what, what music education can look like. Um, on the right hand side of this screen, you'll see connecting here. Um, if we can switch to the next slide, please. I want to talk about this piece just a little bit. With the WMEA music standards, you will, uh, if you've spent time with this or if you dig into these, you will see that our, our standards are very much based on the uh, national standards that were released in 2014. Our standards committees work really hard at um, talking about what did we like about the way that the national standards were set up, how might we um, improve that, how take it to a new place. Um, how might we change the formatting, make it more readable, all of that. But then this connecting bit. This is where um, on the, the left hand side of this screen, the national standards have two different pieces that were tied to connecting. And you can see that language on the left hand side of the screen. Our standards committee felt like we really wanted to grow this and we felt like there was a great opportunity to grow the connecting piece. And so we actually broke this into six separate areas, one of them being literature literacy connections, um, one of them being affective connections. If you've uh, done any of the CMP workshops, you've probably dug um, into that affective piece. And I, I joke with, I, I teach music education at UW River Falls, and I, I often will laugh with my students about how important that affective piece is for us. And I ask a simple question, how many of you who are instrumentalists decided to go into music because you had a killer E flat major scale? Like, that's not how we function, right? That's not what music is to us. It's that, that connection piece that becomes really important. So um, how does music impact us? How, what are our values, um, our opinions, our desires, uh, personal awareness, character is issues, all of those kinds of things. Personal connections, a, a similar sort of a track. And then broadening out musical connections that move into different genres or time periods or um, musical styles from around the world. Um, academic connections, those interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary opportunities. Um, and then human connections as well. And um, again, having those, those chances to explore lots of different cultural things. Um, so uh, I, wanna, I wanna just mention to you two things in closing. One is that um, there are many resources that are available 
for you. And there's opportunities like these, these standards workshops or the CMP workshops that are, are coming up that you can really broaden what you are doing with music education. Um, we also have a resource on our WMEA website um, and it's, uh, you can find it on our, our advocacy page. It's called the WMEA Online Teaching Project. And it's something that we started right when COVID um, became very real and we all started moving into our online teaching and learning environments. Um, this is an opportunity for teachers to share ideas and resources. And if you look on this page, you'll see that there's sample materials there. Um, I would highly encourage you to not only look at those materials, but also to consider digging in and sending in your own submissions to share. Please know they don't have to be perfect. Like, you know, for all of these things, I hope that you see an idea and you turn it into your own along the way. Um, the, the, uh, the last thing that I wanted to share with you is I have no doubt that we can and we will make incredible music education experiences for our students. We can do this and, and if we think about um, the, the opportunities that we have under creating, performing, responding, and connecting, we can make really meaningful experiences. The how might be different, but the what, those standards can, can truly guide, guide us and ground us. So that's what I want to share with you about the standards today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. And now